The lengthy conflict that resulted from Russia's invasion of Ukraine soon reached a high attrition rate. Russia has lost thousands of infantry combat vehicles, hundreds of thousands of tanks, dozens of fighter jets, and thousands of soldiers, but it has also failed to accomplish any of its primary military goals. However, the Russian Ministry of Defense is adjusting to new circumstances by reverting to earlier strategies of frontal assaults. Moscow is making gains on multiple fronts, leveraging its greater manpower pool to overcome Ukraine's present artillery shortfall, while Europe's shell allotment has trailed behind political unrest in the US. The political unrest and the sluggish delivery of military assistance will force Ukraine to adopt a more cautious 2024 strategy. In addition to pressing for international assistance across all geopolitical spheres, Kyiv needs to concentrate on defense in depth, hit critical Russian military, economic, and logistical targets, and get ready for more concentrated offensives later in 2024 2025. Russian equipment attrition in Ukraine. The long standing autocrat of Russia, Vladimir Putin, has never shown concern for military losses as long as the goal justifies the means. Putin's callousness would be sown by the Kursk submarine disaster. Nevertheless, in order to maintain the imperial ideal, Putin and the Kremlin place a high priority on economic funding and logistics. The Russian military's arsenal has significantly deteriorated throughout the conflict in Ukraine. By early March 2024, the Russian army had lost 1,100 armored vehicles, 3,400 infantry fighting vehicles, 102 aircraft, 135 helicopters, and 21 naval vessels in addition to almost 2,700 tanks. Even in a war economy, Russia can continue to lose equipment through 2024, but at this rate of attrition, the Russian armed forces will need to prioritize what it already has until 2025. As long as sanctions are in place, Moscow will be held accountable for pouring a battalion's worth of logistics into offensives in already sparsely populated Ukrainian cities like Marinka, Avdivka, Vuladar, Kupiansk, and Krinky. This will eliminate opportunities for reindustrialization just as quickly as it will destroy equipment. Although the Kremlin finally cannot afford to suffer significant equipment losses, Russia prefers frontal assaults, especially with Storm Z battalions. Hence, Ukraine can concentrate on such attacks.